All right, so we're diving into some really interesting stuff today, huh? You're on. Yeah. A mm -hmm. place where well, it seems like religion and politics are kind of inseparable, wouldn't you say? They're definitely intertwined, that's for sure. And you've been looking into these reports about a pretty big um, potential religious shift that's yeah. happening over there. Right. Specifically, we're talking about a growing Christian movement and in the heart of an Islamic republic. Surprising, to say the least. It's definitely caught people's attention, and for good reason, I'd say. We're seeing reports like from CBN News, even the Tide Ministry, suggesting that maybe as many as a million people have actually converted from Islam to Christianity in Iran. A million. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay, yeah. so that number alone is, that's pretty huge. Yeah. But there's more to it than that, right? I mean, you also found some reports about mosque closures um, yeah, all across that. Iran. Yeah, that's right. One Iranian cleric, I think it was, was quoted saying that something like 50,000 out of 75,000 mosques have closed down because people just aren't showing up anymore. Wow. So that naturally makes you wonder, are these two things connected? It's definitely a question worth asking, yeah. I mean, obviously, we've got to be a bit cautious about those numbers, especially considering where they're coming from. Sure. But the mere fact that they're being reported at all, well, it kind of suggests that something big might be going on. It's hard to ignore. Right, yeah. yeah, exactly. So you've been digging into the why behind all of this. Like, what could be driving this shift? And one thing that keeps popping up is this sense of, well, disillusionment that a lot of Iranians seem to be feeling right now. Right. And it makes sense when you look at the bigger picture. You've got drug option, poverty, corruption. These are really serious issues that everyday Iranians are dealing with. Absolutely. Real struggles, real hardships. Yeah. And it seems like within all of that, Christianity is finding a foothold. Your research pointed to this idea of forgiveness being a powerful draw. Forgiveness. Yeah, like radical forgiveness, you know, mm -hmm. loving your enemies, that kind of thing. That's a core part of the gospel message, and it seems to be resonating with people, especially in a place where a lot of people feel let down by their own leaders, by the systems in place. It is interesting, isn't it, that this message of love, of forgiveness, it offers something different, maybe something more hopeful than what they're used to. Yeah. But it's not just the message itself, right? You found that how this message is being spread, it's also pretty interesting. Definitely. While traditional missionary work is definitely happening, the Tide Ministry, for example, they talk a lot about the impact of media, broadcasting, things like that. So getting the message directly into Iran through broadcast. Exactly. Reaching people who are, well, let's just say they're open to hearing something new, something that offers hope, you know? Yeah. And they're finding that in this idea of love and redemption that Christianity talks about. Yeah, yeah. And then there are these stories about dreams, which is fascinating to me people having these vivid dreams that are leading them to explore christianity it's almost like this well i don't know mystical element to it all yeah it's really interesting and if these accounts are true then it suggests that there's something deeper at play here you know some kind of subconscious pull towards this new faith something that goes beyond the usual ways people convert to a different religion it really does feel like there's this deep longing for something more you know, something that goes beyond the existing structures. But, and this is a big but, you also found a much darker side to all of this. Because we're talking about a country where converting from Islam to Christianity, well, it's not just looked down upon, it's actually against the law. Exactly, and that's a really important point. This isn't just some abstract theological debate. This is happening within the Islamic Republic of Iran, a system that to be blunt, sees this kind of religious conversion as a serious threat. And for the Iranians who are making this conversion, the risks are huge. They really are. I mean, your research highlighted that, right? Groups like Open Doors, they're all about monitoring persecution against Christians. And they're saying that in Iran, converts are facing imprisonment, torture, even violence from their own families, their communities. It makes you realize how precious and how fragile that freedom of religion actually is. Yeah, it's a serious reality check. On the one hand, you have this potential spiritual awakening, this search for something more, something hopeful. And on the other hand, this very real threat of, well, of persecution. It's a tough situation, to say the least. Absolutely. And it brings up a much bigger question, doesn't it? If this trend is really as widespread as some are reporting, what could it mean in the long run? 
Because we're not just talking about a handful of converts here, right? This could represent a fundamental change in the religious makeup of a country with a lot of influence, a lot of geopolitical weight. So let's talk about those potential implications then. What if this Jesus revolution, as some are calling it, what if it actually picks up steam? What kind of ripple effects could we see? Well, one thing to consider is missionary activity. We could see more of it both within Iran itself and maybe even spilling over into neighboring countries. I mean, if a million people have really converted in a place like Iran, well, it might encourage missionary groups to ramp up their efforts elsewhere, thinking that, hey, maybe a similar shift could happen in other places too. A domino effect almost. Exactly. And with increased missionary work comes more attention, more awareness of the persecution that's happening to Christians in Iran. That could lead to more pressure on the Iranian government from the international community to actually address those human rights violations, maybe through sanctions, maybe through diplomatic channels. Who knows? So it's like shining a light on something that's been hidden for a long time. Right. Bringing it out into the open. But there are also these other potential implications, things that are harder to measure, but maybe just as important. For example, this idea of a Jesus revolution taking root in Iran, a place often seen as hostile to Christianity, while that could be incredibly inspiring for Christians all over the world, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. It's like it challenges our assumptions. You know, it's a reminder that faith can grow even in the most unexpected, most difficult circumstances. Exactly. But it's really important to approach all of this with a healthy amount of, I don't know, maybe skepticism is the right word. Because as compelling and potentially impactful as all of this is, we do have to acknowledge that a lot of the information we're talking about is coming from, well, faith-based organizations, groups that have a vested interest in this idea of a growing Christian movement in Iran. Exactly. Now, that doesn't mean their reports are false. Of course not. But it does mean that independent verification is crucial here. We need more data, more on-the-ground reporting from a variety of sources to really get a handle on how big this Jesus revolution might actually be. It reminds us that things are rarely simple, especially when you're dealing with something as multifaceted as geopolitics, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be able to hold these multiple truths in mind at the same time. The potential for hope, the potential for positive change, but also the very real dangers, the uncertainties that are still out there. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. It's those gray areas where the answers aren't so clear cut that we need to be the most thoughtful, the most discerning in how we approach these issues. Yeah, no kidding. It's... um. It really feels like every time we dig a little deeper, we just find more layers, more things to consider. And it reminds you that, you know, Iran, with its history, everything going on there, there are no easy answers. Definitely not. And it's so important to remember that, you know, to not oversimplify things, because ultimately this isn't just about like switching religions on paper. Right. Yeah. It's about something much more fundamental. I think this human need to find meaning, to find a place to belong. And often that search is happening against a backdrop of, well, real hardship, real oppression. Yeah. That tension, that struggle between personal belief and, I don't know, the political reality. Yeah. It's definitely a recurring theme here. You did a great job, by the way, of pulling all these different threads together. But I got to say, it does leave you with a lot to process, you know? It always does, doesn't it? But that's kind of the point. I think it's not about wrapping things up neatly. It's about taking this information, letting it sink in, and maybe hopefully letting it change how we see the world around us. You know, challenge our assumptions, get people talking about these important issues, religious freedom, what it means to face persecution for your beliefs. It's all connected. Absolutely. Wow. Well, we covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. This deep dive into, well, this potential Christian movement in Iran, it really has been fascinating and more than a little bit complicated. We've talked about social unrest, the desire for something more, the dangers of embracing a faith that, well, that goes against the grain. But through it all, you see this incredible resilience, this capacity for hope that people hold on to, even in the toughest situations. How powerful stuff. It really is. So where do we go from here? I mean, what are your thoughts? What happens next? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And honestly, I think it's something we all need to sit with for a while. If this is really happening, if there really is this major shift towards Christianity within Iran, it could completely reshape the region, not just religiously, but politically, socially. Yeah. And it forces the world to confront these issues of religious freedom, of persecution. It's not going away anytime soon, that's for sure. And how we respond to it, well, that's a conversation that's just beginning. It really makes you realize, doesn't it, that the world is changing constantly. 
in that search for meaning, for belonging. It's something we all share <laughs> in a way. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. It's been um, thought-provoking, to say the least. We'll leave you with this. What could this potential shift in Iran mean for the future of the Middle East, for how we understand faith, freedom, and everything in between? It's a lot to unpack, and we hope you'll keep exploring these questions with us. Feel the pain.